Hello everyone, welcome to the Don Lemon Show. The digital town square is for everyone. That is what Elon Musk declared last summer when he first invited me and my colleague Rachel Maddow to join X. He said, quote, it would be great to have folks on the left put their shows on this platform, end quote. Now, first of all, I'm not on the left. Politically, I am fiercely independent. But putting that aside, we now know that Elon's sales pitch simply was just not genuine. Because I dare anyone, and especially him, to watch our conversation in full and tell me that our back and forth was not exactly what X is supposed to be all about. Our dialogue was tough, but it was fair, occasionally tense, but never disrespectful. We both brought facts to the table to back up our arguments. And I didn't press Elon on anything that he hadn't previously spoken about in public. The interview was precisely what Elon has long claimed that he wants to make a home for on X, a free exchange of ideas. We dug into serious issues, the nuances of the Electoral College, the future of automotives, the complexities of DEI, even our own personal battles with depression. Did he really expect for me to simply lavish him with praise for an hour? If so, he could have sat down with Megyn Kelly or Tucker Carlson. But no, he opted to sit down with me, an independent journalist, to have a real conversation. I'm glad he did it. And if he chooses to watch the whole interview, he'll come to appreciate just how valuable our discussion was. In fact, I hope every conversation that we have on this show is an open forum just like that. You can't have a public town square where its owner controls the microphone and the volume. Now, my next guest is the best person in the business to discuss all things tech and, yes, Elon Musk, the legendary journalist Kara Swisher. Hey, Don, how you doing? I'm great. Listen, I'm going to get into your book. What's very new? Shortly. Anything new? N not anything much. New? Anything nothing, happening? Nothing going on. Just a, you know, an elephant in the room. And we're talking about the yeah. interview. So uh, I assume yeah. that you saw it. What'd you of think? Of course, I watched the whole thing. What'd you um, think? I thought it was an excellent interview. I thought it was very fair. I think people watching it will be wondering why he threw a gasket over it. It was a very fair interview. I did understand what happened with him by watching the whole thing and watching his face, yeah. having interviewed him so many times. Um, I think two things happened. One, he, he's, he is so surrounded by um, people who uh, kiss his ass all the time or lick him up and down all day that he's not used to any pushback whatsoever anymore. He used to be, by the way. This was not, this is not a new fresh thing for him to be pushed back on, but he doesn't like it at all anymore. That's one. Mm -hmm. Two, he's easily bored. I know it sounds crazy. I don't think you were boring. I don't think your questions were boring, but he was bored. Mm. And so he got, he got irritated that he had to ask questions or play word games with you. He did a lot of those, by well, can, the way. Well, can I ask um, you? you well, I'm sorry, sure. I, I want you to get everything in. I'm just wondering. Let me just finish. And then he got irritated that he had to pay you. He doesn't like media. Ah, and so he yes. was, he got, ir he's like, why am I paying this guy for right. this bullshit? Like, I, he didn't like your questions because they weren't uh, sick of, you know, sycophantic. And they weren't also, he, do he likes a little bit of a fight and you were being very fair, unusually fair. He doesn't deserve the fairness you gave him in a lot of ways. You and don't so think so? Why do you say amused? that? Well, only because he's just, he just, he, it, the stuff he was pulling out about slavery, uh, everyone was a slave, or the, the studies, he tried to impugn everybody's studies, therefore making none of them cogent, right? Mm -hmm. Calling you not cogent, a question's not cogent, or I have time to go. Those are all his little tricks uh, to try to, to sort of put FUD into it. Um, but he was, he was ultimately, he was like, if you're not going to lick me up and down, I'm not interested, and you're not going to fight with me in some unfair fashion, because he likes that, he wasn't interested. That's what I, that's well, what I saw. All right, well, that's interesting then. I, I'm glad you mm -hmm. were going here, because my, my strategy was to remain as calm as mm -hmm. possible, right? So You were. Because mm -hmm. I, I did not want people to think, like, you know, I am goading him. This is a gotcha interview. It certainly, you it was not a, a gotcha interview. interview. So um, mm -hmm. you think he wanted me to get in there, he wanted me to be angry, and he wanted more of a fight? I, I think he want, he, I think he, he, he either like it to, likes to be sycophantic where everybody laughs at his dumb jokes, like ha ha ha, that which he likes actually. I've heard this from a number of people. Um, and he's not willing to have a real debate with real terms. He's now in a place where everything he says with people around him, he's right, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, it's sort of like a kingship. 
um, or everybody laughs. It actually happens, as you know, to politicians when you're yeah. interviewing them. They start to talk in broad sentences. And so, and, and then, if not, you've got to be interesting. Like, it, he doesn't want fair. He wants either a fight or he wants being, being he wanted you to lick him up and down. So well, I'm here's a, the, I'm glad you didn't. I want to play this soundbite, what he said to me mm -hmm. when, I, when I asked him about answering questions and about moderation. I don't have to answer questions from reporters. Don, the only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform and you asked for it. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I would not do interview with this interview. So, Carol, you heard him. He said, I don't have to answer questions from any reporters, Don. The only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the platform, you're on the X platform, and you asked me, hmm, uh, otherwise, mm -hmm. I would not do this interview. You're right. right. He's not used yeah. to answering to people. He doesn't want to. He used to want to, and he doesn't now. He doesn't want to. And by the way, he was just showing you his power right then. He was just saying, I don't have to talk to you. And I think what happens, listen, this happened to me. You know, Jeff Bezos used to call me on a regular basis. So did Elon. They don't need to anymore, right? So they were, that was in their self-interest to do so. Because at the time that Jeff called me a lot, he was building a company. And being a, talking to a Wall Street Journal reporter was important for him. Mm -hmm. Then he didn't need to do it. He found he didn't like it. And so he was trying to, like, flex on you right there, which mm -hmm. I think you resisted saying anything. I would have said, is that a flex? Do you really need to do that? Because it was so childish and petulant. Um, and at the same time, you know, I don't have to put up with this shit. I don't need to be here. I'm very important. That was what that was saying, which is only an insecure person would do that, by the way. Right on. Um, you talk about, you know, we call them tech bros, right, or all of these tech giants. Uh, they claim to not mm -hmm. really lo love the media, as, as you have said and as he said. I don't really like the media. Mm -hmm. I don't really trust the media. Mm -hmm. But they certainly love being in the media. If the media is so irrelevant, why is he so obsessed mm -hmm. with it? And for someone who says he doesn't really care what people say and write about him, he certainly cares, he cares. what people say and write about him. Yes, that's true. Well, l welcome to Donald Trump, right? That's the guy yeah. who, who, who's been looking on the outside, looking in for every, all years. And so he just, it's the one thing he can't control, right? He really can't control what you think about him. And so the insecurity runs so deep that they have to really... Um, they just they love they ha love to hate the media it's part of their thing if they if they didn't care about it they wouldn't pay attention to it and it wouldn't matter but they want their own media that's really what's going well, let on me, let they me, want to create their in, own in your book you said of. you said you'd never know it though from listening to the thin skin techies too many of whom have resisted any legitimate criticism while also becoming weirdly media obsessed they can't stop mm -hmm. talking about how much they think the press is irrelevant and have tried to do an end run around journalists once the tongue baths they regularly got and sometimes still do cease and that's from your new book burn book mm -hmm. yes that's exactly right it's a it's a really interesting trend it's you know i'll take it to another topic when when they all left san francisco by the way they're all back many of them are back um, because of ai it being a big industry there now um, they had to keep insulting san francisco after they left they had to tell you why it was terrible why it was failed why they left even though they had made their fortunes there and san francisco and california provided them the environment in order to do you couldn't have done it anywhere else, right? And instead, they tried to kick it on the way out and then kept talking about it. And at one point, I called one of them who just would incessantly tweet about San Francisco. And I said, your girlfriend broke up with you. You need to stop talking about her because she could mm -hmm. give a fuck about you, you know? And it's weird. And it's weird. You're sort of like, well, if you don't like the media, don't read the media. Like, I don't know what to say. And by the way, we're not a very good business anymore. So what do you care? Like, what is the... But it is. It's this deep insecurity of, of having to have everybody love them, um, yeah. even if there's mild criticism. And let me just tell you, you're, 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 you were scrupulously fair. And I wouldn't have nearly... If he had said that interview thing to me right then, I would have said, then get up and fucking get out of here. Fine. You don't want to be here? You can leave. Like, there's the door of your door. Like, I, I don't think I would... He did that to me in an interview. Well, he said I could leave any time. And I said, go ahead. Your, it's your feet. You can walk in any way you want. Sir. Listen, you can do that. So. I, I can't for obvious reasons, <laughs> I know, as I know. you know. Because I know. That's why I, I would said become angry black man. Fair to him. I would become yes, angry black yes, man. Yes, yes, Don't yes, you agree? Yes. Okay. So listen. I would agree. You couldn't. You couldn't do it. But I'm saying that he was. You were. That's why I said you gave him every benefit of the doubt and were very fair. So his reaction is just bizarre as far as I'm concerned. I asked him why he decided to have me on the platform and he said he wanted to have a, ride, mm -hmm. a wide variety of voices and this is what he said first mentioning Tucker Carlson. We want to make sure that there are a wide variety of viewpoints that it's uh, you know we always have for example Tucker Carlson who uh, most people will view as being on the right 
Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's a quite, a, quite a prominent uh, name on the right. We want to have uh, prominent names on the left as well uh, to provide uh, different views of points of view. Well, what are your thoughts on that now? I don't think he wants a wide variety of viewpoints. He so wants then why did he ask me to be on the platform then? I, I think he was forced into it. I, you know, I think he just thinks he does. It's sort of, you know, there's an, remember that, uh, the thing they say about people in Hollywood when you're talking to them, hello, he lied? Well, mm -hmm. hello, he lied in this case. Um, he thinks he wants, he, he, he wants free speech the way he wants it, but not the way it's, it, 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 as, as you spin it out, it is. So he, he doesn't really want you on that. He wants anything that causes attention-seeking, controversy, uh, rancor, dislike, anything that causes a fight. And I think that's what he wants. He, I don't think he wants to hear. He doesn't want to hear your point of view. He wasn't listening to any of your points of view, by the way. If, you, if, you want, if I listened very carefully and everything, every time you were making a point, he was ignoring you. You know, he was like, whatever, you know, looking away. And so he's not interested in other people. He's interested in his point of view and what you think about his point of view. It's sort of me, me, and what do you think about me? So here, uh, what I think, uh, in, in, you know, in the streaming space, and especially in radio, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, if you're, and, and podcasts, the right and even some, you know, people who dabble in conspiracy theories, they do quite well in these spaces. And I Excellent. think that, okay, Fantastic. so, but I think people in these spaces, if they really want, they always say, you know, bring, we want to hear the other side. Wouldn't it be great if, as he said, mm -hmm. if Don Lemon and others would come on? But then they don't really want to hear it. And when they do, mm -hmm. they become offended by it. I think because they're so, so used to living in their own echo chamber and hearing the crap that people say where they are just fact averse. If you present them with facts, right. they're like, no, that's, that's a liberal, right. lefty, woke talking point when it is yep. actually the truth and a fact. I think it was a problem with the left for a long time. Like, it, 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 I don't think they ignored it. I think they just didn't know it, right? They didn't go out of their way to learn it, to learn people's dissatisfaction. I used to spend a lot of time traveling to Kentucky and other places. I heard dissatisfaction. I just didn't always agree with them on the reasons for mm -hmm. their situation, right? And so I think it goes a long way when you actually listen to people and say, okay, I hear what you're saying, and I hear, I hear why you feel that way. I once went to, uh, I think it was Tennessee, you know, they're trying to do all kinds of tech things in rural areas, which I thought was right. never going to happen. And I went there, and I listened to them, and they're like, we're going to create Silicon Holler. And I'm like, you're not. Nobody's coming here. They're not. It's actually cheaper <laughs> to go to India or AI or anything else, but you're not getting any of this because you're not trained enough. That's just a simple fax. And you're being sold a bill of goods by these people that say they're going to return manufacturing, return coal mining. And they appreciated that, actually, because I was like, I'm sorry, it's not. And I, let me tell you why it's going to happen. But in the act of listening to someone, I think you, it goes a long way, right? It goes yeah. a long way to say, I hear what you're saying. Um, and I think that's the that's what the left had done for far too long, or, or the progressives, or whoever you want to yeah. however you want to characterize. I don't think it's the left. I, I don't consider myself left. I consider myself pretty center, or center left, I guess. Um, I if you have to do that, I think I actually am surprising in a lot of ways. Um, at the same time, what's happened to the right is they've accompanied it with fact-free things. Like if you tell, like there's they just want to debate facts, and so. If you're in a post-fact society, which I think the internet has allowed people to be, you initially had an information desert for people, and now you have an information flood. And flooding the zone with facts and non-facts makes it all the same soup. And that, that's right. what Elon was doing to you last night yeah. with those studies. I was like, come well, on. Well, the, the interesting thing is, is, I find when they talk about studies, it's, it's usually uh, some study from uh, a, a group that has an agenda that will be like, uh, you That's know, right. doctors against wokeness. And then they'll you rely yes. on that, which, you know, is, is not right. a fair thing. And then it gets spread in the right wing echo chamber, That's echo right. system, and mm -hmm. then it becomes fact to them. Let's talk about the, the, the former president. Wait, wait, let me just note, someone you should interview, Steve Bannon, talks about this a lot. Yeah. I, I, I listen to Steve Bannon. I don't like what he has to say, but you have to listen to him talking about the up and down of the ecosystem. He's the one that has perfected this flood the zone mm -hmm. and flood it, flood. Listen to him. He, he discusses it because he's proud of it. And, you know, that's the way to do it if you really want to create a truly ignorant society because they're, they're, you know, they're frequently wrong but never in doubt. That's what you're creating, people yeah. like that. Well, speaking of that, in that vein, Steve Bannon, mm -hmm. let's talk about Donald Trump because um, he, Elon Musk insisted to me that he never, he is not going to give a single <laughs> dollar to the Trump campaign. Roll soundbite. Okay. You recently met with Donald Trump in Florida. What did you guys talk about? 
Uh, I was at a dinner, I, I was not done, I was at a breakfast at a friend's place and Donald Trump came by, that's it. So you didn't go there to meet him? I, no, I went to a, a, a friend of mine's house uh, and it said, it said Donald Trump's coming by for breakfast. Is that, uh, just so you know, like, okay, fine. What'd you discuss? I've, I don't, <laughs> um, let's just say uh, I, he did most of the talking. What did he say? <laughs> <laughs> what did he... and, and the, the, the normal things he says, there was nothing particularly gra 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 groundbreaking or new, but uh, he, you know, uh, President Trump likes to talk. And so he talked. I, I, I don't recall him saying anything that he hasn't said publicly. Uh, and that was it, it was just a breakfast. Did he ask you for money? He didn't. Did he ask you for a donation? No. Are you going to loan him money to help pay his bills? No. Not at all? Pay his legal bills? I'm not, I'm not paying, paying his legal bills in any way, shape, or form. And he did not ask you for money? And he did not ask me for money. So what do, you, what do you think of that? I know you think I should have followed up on who was at the breakfast. I but do. What did you think I, of I that? I texted you. Do you believe him that he's not going to give money? No. I don't know. I don't, he doesn't love giving money to politicians. He's not a Peter Thiel character in that regard. So I don't know. I think he will, he could direct, he really has an antipathy more than, a, he doesn't like Trump. He's told me that dozens of times. I mean, it was, you know, he's, I hate Trump. I've had cotton out of his mouth, you know, before when he was joining different groups of, at the beginning of the Trump administration. I can't stand him, he's terrible. We're gonna stop him, the anti-gay and lesbian stuff he wanted to push back on at the time, not anymore. Um, and so I don't think he has a love of Trump. I think he has a love of not being in trouble in a Biden administration. I think he's got a lot more problems if Biden wins. He also has a great antipathy towards Biden because of that silly, he didn't get invited to the, the EV summit that Biden had. That infuriated yeah. him. Like, he told me he was infuriated by that and angry and upset. And it went back. I sort of thought, this is going back. This is some, not about Biden. This is about dad or mom or whoever. Something happened in your youth that you didn't, didn't like. You well, that somewhere. or I have, you know, the best EV and the biggest car company. And, you know. And he so does. It, that was ego. He does. I think, yeah. As yes, well. I, it's fine. He does. You know, I was like, what do you care? You you won. Like, I don't care. So I think I think one of the things I the reason I push back on you is because I don't believe that was I think it was all calculated. Trump was to meet him. And I do think Trump also over talked him, which probably drove Elon crazy. Like mm. Trump tends to go on. Well, he said so the I former president loves to talk Trump. a lot. Yeah. Yeah, that's I that was that was a piece of truth right there. But I think it was planned. I think they're trying to get money from him. He may do it through a PAC. Um, he's not particularly philanthropic or politically active. This mm -hmm. Twitter is his political activation. So I don't imagine. I think he probably will do a PAC of some sort that you're not going to see and you'll never know. What about an but endorsement? Otherwise, ugh. He might at the end. I, I think ultimately, I have to say, he really didn't like Trump at yeah. the time. And I still, I think there's a piece of him that's like, this guy, I just need him, that's all. And so I think it's very hard for him to say, vote. Mm -hmm. he's, he's saying vote Republican, right? So that's his endorsement. He's saying, he, he said, said it I'm leaning against, um, I'm leaning away from Biden. But I want to ask you now he's about- He's never voting for Biden. Yeah. He's never voting for Biden. Let's talk about the whole drug use thing, because that's getting a lot of play. People are interested in the ketamine. And mm -hmm. let me just say that um, drug therapy, right? Your personal therapist or whatever, that, that's not my business. But he put it out there, and that's why I asked him about yeah. it. And he is a very con consequential yeah. person. So he talked about ketamine right. use, and he says he's using it under a doctor's care um, because mm -hmm. of depression that he said, you know, in, in the interview. Now... He has sometimes, yeah. Okay. That's interesting, the way he phrased that. Did you find that interesting? Um, Every I, now and then I get sad kind of thing. It was sort of this interesting. I found it interesting. My brain chemistry I, goes off. I did find myself, and it's going to sound odd, but I did find mm -hmm. myself in, a, in at times feeling empathy for him because I thought he's a, he's a very That's, smart man, but he's emotionally immature. He's not emotionally immature. Mm -hmm. And yeah. also, if he is suffering from depression, I can certainly understand that. I have suffered from depression. I have tried drug mm -hmm. therapy with my therapist, I, I don't, I've never heard of a doctor giving you a prescription for ketamine. That's, you know, I don't know how that mm -hmm. works, but this was under a doctor's care, guided and, and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And then you talk about your feelings under, with that drug mm -hmm. that's supposed to be mind, mind expanding. Let's play the soundbite and then we'll talk. Here it is. Yeah, obviously I'm not a doctor, but I would say 
uh, if someone has depression issues, they should consider talking to their doctor about ketamine instead of SSRIs. Listen, I, I think that um, ketamine uh, and drug therapy is uh, increasingly becoming more in the mainstream. Yeah. Do you think that you're doing it under a doctor's care, right? Yeah, yeah. Literally, it's a prescription from an actual, a real doctor, not like, you know. Yeah, but do you, uh, do you feel like you ever abuse it? I don't think so. Why do you think it touched him off when he has spoken so publicly about this before? Because uh, he thinks you're talking about, you know, look, Elon's a well-known partier. Let's just be honest. They all are. They all are. Let's, I think he thought you were talking about that. I think he's well, like... Well, what the really Wall Street Journal has written about, the concerns about alleged well, drug yes, use beyond prescription correct. drugs. Go on, yeah. Literally, he should not do any... He should... It, it, it's well-known. It's well-known. And so, whatever. I don't care. Like, honestly, if this guy wants to party, he should party. He's a rich guy. He can do whatever he wants, well, right? In that way. In your book, you point out a number of different I think different that's what he CEOs. was conflating. You, yeah. that's, I'm going where you're going, I think. You point out a number of different tech CEOs who have actually, you know, abused drugs and widespread drug use mm -hmm. in, in the tech space these days. Are, is, mm -hmm. is there widespread drug use in the tech space these days? I, they've always been. I have been to so many lunches where they want me to take um, uh, either psilocybin or ayahuasca or ketamine with them. They're all on ketamine. They're all using it. And it's fine. Like, again, if it's legal, it's perfectly fine. Let's be clear. I'm from San Francisco. I get it. Uh, you know, it goes back to Steve Jobs talked about using LSD and how it expanded his mind. A lot. It's just been part of the psyche of tech for a long time. And now, you know, I did a great interview with Tim Ferriss, who's been giving funding towards it with Joe Green. It's a big part of the tech scene. And so it's not an overwhelming part of the tech scene, but a lot of them move into abuse. They do. And I don't know. I can't decide which ones are abusing it versus not, but it's, he's, I think he's absolutely right that the use of ketamine, and Scott Galloway just talked about it on our show today about his ketamine therapy he just did in Austin. Um, it can be very helpful for people with trauma, PTSD, PTSD and there's all kinds of things. Members of the military who've been in war have I, tried it and it helps them. I, yeah. I have talked about it for years, including yeah. with Michael Pollan. I think it's absolutely, especially with SSRIs, which he was talking about, very a much a possibly great way to deal with trauma. I think the issue with that those stories in the journal, and I think they were excellent reporting from what I have heard, and I have not done the reporting they did, um, was that not so much that it was the drug use, it's the abuse was one mm -hmm. of the issues, but more to the point was the second set of stories, which is why is the board allowing him, because he has, he has national security credentials, there's all kinds I of concerns. I asked him about that. He, did, he was very annoyed by that, because uh, I think he's worried about that. Yeah, he said he wasn't worried about a second Biden administration and um, his national security clearance they, being revoked. They have to look away. into it. They, they, that may not happen, but he's got to be worried that it, that it gets looked into. That's, for, that's the job of the government, to look into that stuff. Can I ask you way. something, so, Kara? You, yeah. you said that you, it's well known. You've never seen him personally abuse drugs, have you? I don't do drugs, so no. Okay. <laughs> Not with them uh, in the right. parties. I was just space. asking. I don't. I don't. I don't. Um, I don't socialize with these people at all. Uh, right. I don't. I don't. Um, you know, he's talked about we. They all, you know, I, I don't hey, ask. Look, this is not my business. I've smoked not, pot. But I let mean, me just tell you, the one I, thing the yeah. Wall Street Journal, I, I don't either do that, but <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what you do as long as it's, as it's, it's your business if you don't hurt people. That's pretty much my rule. But in the, in the Wall Street Journal articles, the key part of those stories were the board, which parties with him, and also the money they're making, I think more to the point. It's sort of like letting... Uh, they just the money they're making is so far beyond what most board members make. That means they have no ability to separate themselves from him and their interests, and therefore cannot be good board members. That was the crux of that. Those stories, yeah. I thought. Interesting. Well, let me tell you, uh, yeah. as someone who used to smoke pot, I don't like to anymore because it makes me paranoid. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, mushrooms are a mm -hmm. much better drug. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Good to know. Uh, whenever I do them, you should. Uh, I'm never doing them. <laughs> let's okay. talk. Let's talk about now the some of the things we talked about: truth and moderation, uh, and conspiracy theories uh, on uh, the mm -hmm. site. The Great Replacement Theory. Mm -hmm. All right. So we got yeah. into it over the Great Replacement Theory, which Elon denies mm -hmm. that he subscribes to. Do you? Do you believe that the claim that you know he doesn't subscribe to it because he posts about it frequently? 
He does. He's, he's, he's someone who doesn't subscribe to it, he seems very interested in one side of that equation rather significantly. I look at what he tweets, and he uh, look, he's at the very least, he's promoting it, for sure. And he's not promoting the... I haven't seen him promote the other side, which is this is nonsense. If he's very interested in a real debate, which he isn't, he would promote both sides. Now, mm -hmm. a good example was when Mark Cuban went on there, Godspeed for him, I can't believe he did it, and tried to make a good argument for DEI, right? And he said, here's my experience, and then he had very detailed and interesting observations from his own experience as a manager and a, some, an entrepreneur. And he was making the case for DEI. You know what Elon's response was? It wasn't like, okay, interesting. I, this is interesting to hear that. What about this? Instead, his response was, you're a moron. Yeah. That's not someone interested in debate. That is someone interested in one side. So, I should not I have been know. surprised by, by, by his no. response then. Uh, I want to play the sound So bite. I would have asked that. That's what I would have asked, actually, right after he said that. Say, why don't you promote the other side if you're interested in debate? So just Let, saying. Let's listen to more of what he had to say about uh, the Great Replacement Theory. Can we talk about the Great Replacement Theory now? Um, some of the things that you post, the Great Replacement Theory, you claim that Democrats President Biden's immigration plan to open up the border. You said that they're, the president is getting, and Democrats are doing it, to get more votes. Um, but undocumented immigrants cannot vote in federal elections, so how is that possible? Right. Um, well, you're conflating two things. One is great replacement theory. Uh, the other is, which I, I don't subscribe to that. I'm simply saying that there is an incentive here. Uh, if uh, legal immigrants wish, I think, have a a very strong bias to, at least everything I've read, it's a very strong bias to vote Democrat. Okay. Kara, my question is, mm -hmm. this is do you think Elon is racist? I don't, I, I hate to say I don't know what's in his heart, but he certainly has a, a record of tweeting things publicly that are problematic and promoting them, especially, uh, and the stuff that's going on in the name of free speech on Twitter seems to favor white supremacists. Um, he seems to favor them. He seems to tweet them more often or affiliate with them or agree with them or say, read this, interesting. That It's sort mm -hmm. of a, it's a weird way. And so wink, I don't wink, see nod, him doing nod. the opposite. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Yeah. And so um, I, I don't see the other stuff being promoted. Like, okay, uh, okay, I put this guy up now. I'm gonna, if he's really interested in real debate, uh, by the way, I don't think you should ever uh, debate a white supremacist. They're heinous, and that's it. Um, but if he wants to go that far with his free speech absolutism, which I think is not absolute in any way, he would pr be promoting all kinds of points of view. So I... Um, you know, his grandfather was quite like a professional racist, as far as I can see from reading about him. Um, I don't blame, I don't, I don't, look, I had grandparents that had some issues, um, not like that, but certainly had, I would say, racist remarks. I've heard them from my own people in my own family, m older, much older. And I get that. I get that. It was a different time. It was, if they were not educated, they were not, they were ignorant, I think, in many ways. But I, and I don't blame Elon for his grandfather either, by the way, but boy, what a, go out and read about this guy because he's quite something. Um, but I, 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 so I don't attribute that to him, but I think he promotes, he tends to promote more racist stuff well, in, and also anti-trans stuff, anti-gay stuff. Everything he does is sort of on one side of the equation, and I, I would love to see him promote other things. That would be great. Well, that was kind of, you kind of got to the point I was making about, um, the, his DEI tweets or posts as it mm -hmm. relates to the, the woman pilot from the Alaska airline. Oh. And, and why, so I, I was wondering, why didn't he say, well, this plane was safely landed without incident by a, a female or he woman can't. pilot who was so calm and cool under pressure. Doesn't that show you that women pilots are just as, you know, smart and skilled as male pilots? Yeah. But... No, because he's no, because he can't do that. Because what he wants to he wants to get through that pe black, uh, people of color and women are getting breaks when yeah. he has no proof of that. And secondly, instead of saying that he, it, it's very what he did there was really interesting. He was like it was sort of the Tucker Carlson just asking questions. Well, we don't want standards to be lowered if they were, and so it, 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 it but they aren't. So why are we arguing? Well, this? It's like. <laughs> You know, when did you, when did you, when did you last beat your wife, right? When did you, you know, that's, it's that famous court questions. Yeah. When did you stop beating your wife? And that's what that was. And so instead of saying, 
There's absolutely no proof of this. I just am interested in standards. I, I have to tell you, having covered the tech industry, and I think I talk about this in my book, actually, where um, where Twitter, uh, where I was, I did a story about Twitter uh, having no 10 white men on its board, and I was like, you simply can't, and, and Twitter was diverse as a, mm -hmm. as a user base. You, how did it come to be 10 white men of the same type? Mm -hmm. And I, my lead was on this board of Twitter, which has three Peters and a dick, there are no women and people of color. Like, what? how did that happen? I thought that was a great lead, and I edited it myself, and I wrote it, and it was all good. Um, I think the, the CEO called me and said, funny penis joke in your lead there, Kara, but, you know, we have standards. And it's only used when it comes to women and people of color, yeah. right? That's only big. And I was like, well, how is it that you had standards when this group of 10 white men have been driving this company into a wall for, for a decade now? And no like, one ever that says was, anything. That's, Failing I, I was up. like, where were your standards at? Failing up. And Failing so up. I was like, but it, that's what he was doing. He was doing a, oh, no, I, I, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is we don't want it to happen. Yeah. Like, but like, but what happened to happening. all those men? Yeah. What, but what no, happened? Who, who, all right, who crashed all those planes over the past 50 years? <laughs> white guys. Like, right? Yeah. We're not blaming them. Like, it wasn't because they're white guys that they crashed the planes. There's all kinds of different reasons. But if you really want to do the statistics, more white men crash planes than anyone in history. Right. right? Exactly. Um, that I, reminds me of when I... Uh, and it's went, not because they're white, by the way. That reminds me of when Whatever. I went for, on my interview for, and I worked in Chicago, eventually uh, went, went to work in Chicago, and I was about to get ready to go to my interview in the morning. I was watching their morning show, and their anchor was Dick Johnson, mm -hmm. and the weather guy was Pete Sack. So, <laughs> 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 so I got oh, I to gotta ask you this, though, because you, you brought it up, and I want to ask you. And people have been asking me what I meant by when I said he did not like answering questions or being held to account from people like me. And so some people took it to mean a racial thing. I meant oh, someone who has a different worldview. But since people mm -hmm. raised it and you said what you said, do you think that he was uncomfortable? I didn't want to go there. Do you think he was uncomfortable mm -hmm. sitting in front of a gay black guy? Probably more gay than black, I would think. I hate to say that, but um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, know. I think having to like, answer questions from... I don't think he likes control beyond himself. And okay. so it doesn't matter who's exerting it. I don't think he much likes Joe Biden either, right? A white guy, right? Yeah. So I think he, he doesn't like anybody in a position of control of him because I think he probably had a youth. Now, again, not an excuse. Everyone's like, oh, we had a hard... He talked about it very briefly. I had a hard youth. Guess what? I had a hard youth too. So I'm sorry to tell you, everyone has a hard. I like did too. many people, not everybody. Yeah. You know, I don't sit around. And one of the things that I think you did really well there, um, which could even be stressed more, was he was talking about we have to get over it. Like we did get over. It. He goes, well, you're successful. He threw that in. Did you hear him say yeah, that to of you? Course. Well, you're yeah. you overcame it. Like why do we have to overcome it? Right. Like why is this a tax? Why do I have a tax because I'm gay? Why do I have a tax because I'm a woman? Like. We have to. We, we do overcome it, but why in the world do we have to? Like, why why isn't it? It would be really nice if we were all judged on our character and our results, but that's just not the case. It's yeah. just simply, and then we don't want to whine about it because we don't whine about it. What we want to say is, just notice some people are starting from third base and some people are starting from home. Right. And that's the way it goes. Well, it's a point about the pilots, right? I mean, more, as you said, right. white guys have crashed uh, planes. And also, it's just as, it's as simple as this. Empathy. About having empathy mm -hmm. for other people. Like, you know, I would say, mm -hmm. okay, great. You know, you've had all these things. You've had all of these um, opportunities. I, and I, I think I said an ease in society that the way many people don't, many he people of color and women, he doesn't, he doesn't see that. But yet here I am, mm -hmm. this person who's an African-American who is a descendant of a slave, found some way to empathize in that interview mm -hmm. with Elon Musk by relating to him on uh, mm -hmm. depression or, you know, possibly, um, you know, him being vulnerable in some sense of his emotional maturity or some sort of mental health issue. Um, People will be surprised, but I'm often sad when I, I was sad after that interview, I have to say, for why? him, for him. Oh, just such opportunity, such a brilliant guy, such, I've spent a lot of time with him, so many interesting things he's doing around the cars, around space, even that stupid tunnel thing is interesting, right? So it's many amazing. good ideas. And yeah. One of the reasons I was attracted to him when I was covering a lot of people, talking to him, 
be, is because it was inspirational, some of it was. Even though I, I was like, oh, yet another egomaniac tech guy. Listen, he was just like everybody else in that regard, aggressive, arrogant, et cetera. But he was, <clears throat> he was handling big ideas, and that was great. That was really great. And so when you see him indulge in just you know random weirdnesses, you're sort of like, what a waste of a, a yeah. great mind. And I don't mean he's the greatest mind because these people think they're geniuses and can't be touched. I often called him Jesus to his face, like, listen, Jesus, like, but he was, um, uh, you know, it's, it, what a potential, and listen, he's done a lot, he's done a lot of things, and right now, he died, there would be a plus, you know, a plus with the cars and everything else, but boy, why tarnish this, for Did, what, for is what there, precisely? Is there any, you said you found yourself feeling sorry for him, but uh, listen, I think people will say, oh, I know how, Kara, I know how, how Kara Swisher feels about Elon Musk. I know, I know, I know. Is there, did, was there anything positive in there in the interview? And I don't mean from me, but I mean about him. I thought some of his answers were good. I think he actually came off in the interview better than he felt in the room. I don't think it was as terrible as he's he felt. He's very charming. Right? He's very charming. Yeah. yeah. I think, he, you know, he seemed cogent. Speaking of cogent, he seemed cogent. And I think his, fa his oh God, his argument skills have declined rather precipitously. Like, he doesn't have a really good argument for things anymore. He used to be sharper in that regard. So no positives? Um, uh, positives. Um, uh, let me think. For him in that interview, I think you gave him time to explain himself. I think that was a good thing so people can see strategy. it. I think in these, in, these little, in these little tweets that he does, it's very, it's, he's a cartoon. And so you got to see a little bit more. I can't say it was positive for him in that regard because his arguments are so thin now. Um, can I just I say something on that before we get, we get too far away from case. what yeah. you just said? Yeah. That was yeah. part of the strategy is to let him talk to explain mm -hmm. himself, to get to understand yeah. him, right? And other, right. But, yeah. but people who are, you know, not, doesn't have a keen, people who don't have a keen eye um, and who thought that I had an agenda, my agenda was to let him speak. No. It wasn't, they said, oh, you're yeah. interrogating him and how dare you. I, you, you, know, you ask people the same question different ways because you really want to get at exactly. You really how what they feel and what they're saying and yeah, that's why he, 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 he circled around times. and he came back to yeah. he finally he didn't get back to the ketamine he got to the the real good answer on the ketamine question once i came back to it or he came back to it and he said mm -hmm. you know don the reason i did that is because i suffer from depression and i think that people on ssris and i was like that is a great answer thank you very much well, you got and him, then we you, moved on you, yeah, you got him to be reflective. I think one of the problems with not just Elon, but a lot of these people is, I, I always joke, it's a mirror that, it's a miracle they can see themselves in mirrors in <laughs> Silicon Valley because they're so non-reflective, <laughs> like, like they're vampires. And so yeah. I, 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 you, to get him to be reflective is very hard. And yeah. that was a moment like, okay, just answer the fucking question you're doing because people shouldn't be taking opiates. We got, thank you. Yeah. Like, but, which seems obvious. But like, I think it's he not had, like no, it's a no shit Sherlock moment. I really do think he got to, you know, share of himself. Listen, I want to get to your book, but really all of this that we've been talking about is about Burn Book. Sure. I mean, you write about this in, in, in it Burn is. Book, right? He's a, he's a main character in it, or a critical character. And by the way, let me just say, it was an opportunity missed for him, for, for him to do, because by the end, he was irritated. That was mm -hmm. clear. Like, he was like, let me get out of here. This is a waste. I can see him going, my time is the most valuable thing on earth, and this is a waste of my time, my precious life, because I'm preciouser than everybody else. And it was a real opportunity for him to make a case around things that mattered to him, including cars, including rockets. And he's not, unfortunately, he, he's not going to ever talk about the great things anymore because he's indulged himself on the stupid things. He, he goes off to, uh, to, and he's like, why are you asking me about, you know, anti-trans stuff. Well, because you're friggin' tweeting really anti-trans stuff. So we have to ask you. And why don't you ask me about the rockets? Well, if you'd stop like talking about immigrants and bloodbaths, maybe we could. And so that was the opportunity missed for him in this interview. Yeah. That to me was the, and there was no way around it. And he was, then he got irritated and, and impatient with you, which I thought was stupid on his part, but he can't help himself in that regard. Why do you say that? Because his stupid? time is more important than yours, Don. That's why. His time is precious because he's saving humanity and you're not. So. Why did you think it was which stupid? Which he said to me before. Uh, for him to do that? Mm -hmm. For him to do that? Because cause, cause there is a really... Um, one time we did an interview and he said um, to me, if Tesla doesn't survive, humanity is doomed. And I was like... Okay, sure. 
I think he's contributory in a really positive way from a lot of perspectives and has indulged himself badly to, to not be part of the solution. He's not part of the solution anymore. He's part of the thing. And I think in a, in a big, long interview like that, if he just took a fucking second, you could have done a very a much – when he got – irritated by you it was over that interview as far as I could tell um, mm. and that's too bad that's too bad your your book is fantastic I do have to say that and you write you've Thank known you. him for a long time and many other uh, of mm -hmm. the folks yeah. here and listen I know that you pushed the the dead the deadline for your book back like a couple of years I I just dealt with that <laughs> that's in the book laziness. That I'm writing. laziness well mine wasn't laziness yeah. but I you know I, I, I had a, a you know Mm -hmm. I got let go from a job. You may have you may have heard like yeah, a heard. whole lot happen yeah. over the last. Okay, but you so know, I gotta say, I've never seen someone getting fired so creatively as you. But I gotta say, I know you weren't fired, but whatever. But well, my, my whole point. I was like that. John Lemon. That John <laughs> Lemon wins when he gets fired. The whole point of the of the book is you 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 really uh, I shouldn't say expose these guys, but you bring light to who they are and what they are. And I'm wondering in the book. Did you um, did you watch the change in him? Because was he at some point a little bit more libertarian, maybe more liberal, and now he seems to be yeah. going to the far right? Have you? Did you see he that was change that, happening? He had no, I, I had no idea of his politics. I knew a lot of people's. I mean, like Mark Andreessen was clearly moving in. I call it libertarian light because I don't think any of them understand what it means to be libertarian. I don't think they're very well educated or well versed in things. He happens to be a, a bigger reader, very steeped in science fiction and video games. He talked a little bit about video game playing in your interview. He's very video game centric and, and simulation and things like that. Uh, he had always been much more interesting from a uh, you know, Steve Jobs was the most erudite person among those people who was well read and had a lot of different, had read a lot. And he was a real brilliant mind, right? Oh, yeah, but not just that. I don't think yeah. he's necessarily any more brilliant than Elon Musk. He just was, he just took some time to learn about a lot of things, mm -hmm. which I think you have to be curious to be a smart person truly in this world. And I think Elon's just represent of a lot of people who think they know everything without doing the actual work it takes to know everything. And so as you get wealthier, you have you get a pass on everything, right? You get a pass on everything because everyone is being paid for by you, and therefore they're going to agree with you. And I don't think you work as hard at, at uh, you know, you don't work as hard as at, at learning as because you don't have to. You can shortcut everything. And so I think he represents a lot of people in Silicon Valley that either don't do the work that it takes to really be wise um, or don't have the experience. And so in Elon's case, I didn't know his politics. I, I knew he had voted for Obama. I knew he loved Obama. I think he voted for Hillary Clinton is what he told me. I think he's talked about that publicly. Um, and so I, I wouldn't say he was liberal, but I have to say he was a big supporter of gay and lesbian issues in our discussions, unless he was lying to me. Um, he was, I would say, live and let live, I guess, would be the, you know, that kind of thing, or let's just focus on business. He definitely didn't like regulations, for sure, mm -hmm. um, but that was, that's all of them. Um, and so it was sort of this sort of tolerant, socially tolerant, uh, let's let the business people take, and techies take care of the rest kind of personality, which is very mm -hmm. common in Silicon Valley. Was. Mm -hmm. Now they've become radicalized. Now they're like... They're obsessed with everything and think they're experts in, like, VCs talking about Ukraine. I literally want to just okay, poke so my eye out. Let me ask you about this. You talk in, in this book about um, the sense of victimhood amongst many of the tech moguls. Grievance. Yeah. What? Why? Well, Don, the richest people in the world, all many of whom are white and straight, are really the victims in this society. They really are. I don't know if you know that, but they are. No, it's just ridiculous. The, it's an astonishing thing to watch people who have every advantage talk about how bad... Like, what I think has happened is, for years, people of color or women or whoever have never spoken up, and now they are, and they've been like, okay, fine, I was bad, now let's move on. Like, that, move on is their favorite word. But maybe we don't want to move on for a second. Maybe we want to let you have a little bit of... of, of maybe we want some schadenfreude. schadenfreude. Um, I, I think they... Um, they just can't tolerate 
facing what has happened. And it's, it's not that we want to victimize, make them like you, bad person. It's that let's take a minute and think about it, right? And they don't want it to, these people at, by nature don't want to reflect, as I said. And so they become a grievance. They're, everything's a grievance. Every, every, every media is biased and leftist. Every uh, one who was interested in climate change is a whiner, is a this. And they, all they can do is hit because that's all they know how to do. That's all they've done their whole lives. And so they don't want to solve. They don't want to give any of their giant piles of money up ever. Um, they think, I'll never forget one of people, it wasn't Elon, but it was one of, I can't remember which one it was, where I said, you're going to either, I was talking about income inequality, and they were talking about if you only worked hard enough, you'd get rich. I was like, mm, I think you you started, I, I enjoyed your Harvard experience, and by the way, you grew up rich, and by the way, you had, you know, very slavish parents who, like, helped you all along the way. Um, I, and, and they were just going on and on about income inequality. You have to just make it. If you just pull yourself, you know, it's sort of the Martin Luther King thing, you know, they're, they're ignoring that you don't have bootstraps, so you really can't pull yourself well, you up. If you don't have boots okay. either, that's a little bit harder. Boots either. <laughs> that's exactly right. And I'm not talking, listen, I get it. There's a, there's a, I'm an entrepreneur myself. I really do believe in hard work and fortitude, but I've been advantaged. I'm also aware of my advantage. And one of the things, someone said to me, I, I, we were talking about income inequality, and I said, you know what? If you don't do something about income inequality, you're, you're, you you either got to fix income inequality or you're going to need to armor plate your Tesla. That's really the choice we have here because it's going to get ugly. And I realized as I was saying, as it was coming out of my mouth, this guy wants to armor plate his Tesla. Mm. He actually does. That's more in, they want to go into their bunkers. They want to have their armies. They want to... They don't want to fix the problem, you which would be that? good for everybody. Some of them, yeah, I do. I mean, that, the fact that they all have bunkers and all this, all these apocalypse plans, it's just, are going to Mars. They yeah. don't have an alternative of fixing what's on this planet right now. That's not, they've decided it's done, and yeah. they don't, there's not a fixing of it. Well, so. two, two things before I let you go, because I know you- Not all of them. Can I just say? Yes. Not all of them. There's all these amazing people involved in tech that are doing great things. So I just want to, I have, I, I have to stress that. Unfortunately, yeah. the unaccountable richest ones are not the best we have to offer, I think, in many ways. So then with that said, what do you think the most dangerous aspect of the tech space, in the tech space right now? What's the most dangerous aspect of it? That they're running space, they're running AI, they're running all the most important things going forward, um, and they're unaccountable. I don't mind that they're that they do great things. I think accountability is critical. Mm -hmm. I think our elected officials has, have utterly abrogated their power um, and aren't, or else they're bought and paid for. Um, so they're not regulating them. They don't have any guardrails. And I just think no matter how you slice it, even the best person without guardrails is a problem, right? Yeah. I blow stop signs all the time and I'm glad I get tickets. Um, <laughs> so I think that, um, that you, without accountability with massive wealth and it's not Donna, it's not a little wealth. This is the most massive oh gosh, collection yeah. of wealth on the planet. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, two hundred and sixty billion dollars. Come on, what do you think's going to happen? Just right. what do you think's going to happen? Yeah. And if if one of them turns out to be good, well, that would be great. But probably bad people will show up, right? Can, and so that's my issue: is on lack of accountability and lack of government regulation. When you talk about lack of accountability, it just brings up a point. Of, sorry, I, I, I lied. I, have, I want go to ahead. ask you another thing. When you talk about sure, lack of ahead. accountability, it reminded me of this whole idea about free speech, right? And then during the interview, mm -hmm. when I asked uh, Elon Musk about um, hate speech, and he says, we have ways of suppressing that. And I wish I had followed mm -hmm. up because I want to know what other ways do they have of suppressing? Who else do they suppress? I, I have people calling right. me now saying, you, know, you realize right. you're being shadow banned. You realize that your content is oh, being wow. suppressed right yeah. now. Yep, and if you look probably. up your, your interview on the site, it's all these people who are saying, you know, Don Lemon bad and not your actual interview. What is going mm -hmm. on with, do you believe that? Do you think that he, they are purposely suppressing some people's content? I'm always interested by what people accuse others of because it's often about themselves, right? You know, I think he got so obsessed with those Twitter files and found exactly nothing or small examples of stupid decision making on the part of Twitter. But those Twitter files were just a ridiculous waste of time for everybody because he didn't really find, you never really find what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. But I do believe when we put, um, I have two minds of this. I am. I'm guessing they're probably doing that to you. If I had to guess, I, that's what I'd do if I were him, if I were like him. 
Um, and second, like, and also read like Zoe Schiffer's book on Twitter. She, he like ordered everybody to follow Elon. That's he what I read. It, That's right? what I read to prepare for the yeah. interview. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he 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 made everybody follow him, whether you wanted to or not. I, I you know, that's that he can do it. Yeah. I'm of two minds. I suspect if I were him, I would be doing that because it just bothers him. And then secondly, um, it's his platform. He bought it and overpaid for it. So he can do it. Right, right Don? Like, I agree with too you. bad. Yeah. Does, go to YouTube. It's, so, it's bigger and more important. By the way, Twitter right. is small. Right. But then don't it's, call it, don't loud. say it's free speech for all when you're actually, or don't say it's it. Not, we, you want to be censored if you're actually censoring people well, by suppressing their, their content. Then, they yeah. don't understand. They don't. They want to use free speech as a cudgel rather than the privilege that it is in our country. Okay. You know, instead of be like censorship. The the most blabby people who never shut up scream censorship. Okay. Because so, it works. It works. So Kara, listen. I, I'm in this new space mm -hmm. with you now, and we'll see how yeah. long it, it lasts. Right. I wonder. I'm wondering if oh, you no. give me. <laughs> You're giving up already, no, Don? No, I'm joking. Oh. We're, it's I'm a joking. marathon. I just want to know yeah. if you have any advice for me because everyone's like, everyone's saying, "Who's your next interview? What are you?" Gonna, I'm like, "This one almost killed me." So yeah, it almost did. Well, I'm sorry, Don. It's a marathon, not a not a sprint. What's your advice for, for me, Miss Kara Swisher? Well, I think it's hard. I have given you advice. You've taken none of it. So you, I told you he was going to do this to you, and was, let's stress that again. I told you this is exact. I told you the Thursday before, the Saturday after it happened, the weeks summer before, before. That months before. You so said to me, you said to me on, on stage when I interviewed you at the 92nd Street Y and I told you why I was doing it, you said yeah. he's never going to yeah. do it. And oh well, there you go. That's right, because I know my, my, my ridiculous rich people, uh, tech dudes. Um, I think it's really going to be really hard for you, honestly, because, and I think you've got the entrepreneurial zeal to do it, but it, you've come from an industry where speaking of licking up and down, it's a very different environment for anchors, right? For mm -hmm. like as yourself, you get really well paid, everything is brought to you, Pro producers really run the show, even if you're very involved. So you have a lot of help. In this case, you have to be really entrepreneurial and everything you do has to be about you, you yourself and your energy and motivation. And that's why I love tech people because they, they often they are like that until they get rich and then they get ridiculous. But <laughs> um, but I think it's really hard in this environment to, to, to really know that everything, you're the center of it in, a, in a, a very different way than you're used to. And that's really hard. And so everything that happens has to come from you and your entrepreneurial push. And that is, a, it's not something you can't do. I think you have it in you. That's not the, I think a lot of people have it in them. But it's really hard because uh, it's smaller. It's not, it's not, but it can be just as impactful. Like I, I am by myself and I think I have huge impact. You do. And it's because I keep my economics in line with my revenues. That's the other thing is you've got to really understand the economics of it. And that's something you didn't have to worry about. And nobody in old media did. They didn't yeah. know where the money was coming from. And so your value depends on what you, how well you're going to do depends on your what you, what you put into it. And it's really, that's a much different, it's a, it's, I think you can absolutely do it. I think, listen, I really don't like what Megyn Kelly's doing, but you can see her working it, right? She's working her, her you know, Meghan Markle, Don Lemon obsession to make money. She's, by the way, weirdly obsessed with you, but let's oh, just yeah, move have, on from I that. No, I, I have no uh, idea. I don't pay attention to that. No, but, but yeah. like even, I'm going to compliment people I don't like. Ben right. Shapiro, he's working it. He's right. working his thing. I get what he, he's doing, what I'm doing. He's just saying some things I don't agree with, right? Or his, he's mad all the time about whatever. Um, I, really, I really think there's a real opportunity for smaller media that's more impactful, that is very profitable. Yeah. That's really the opportunity here. So it's a que question of what you put into it. And I think um, you have to do great interviews. You're going to have to figure out, you have to be super flexible. And if you are super flexible and are willing to try things and then quit when they don't work, that's that's going to be, you'll be successful. Well, well, You're a very gifted interviewer and broadcaster, so that's a good start. Well, so. thank you. I agree with you on that, and I am willing to try and change things. And I don't know, uh, you know, apparently I hear that she is obsessed with me, but I'll say this. I'm not going to become a <laughs> flamethrower or a conspiracy theorist or thirsty, uh, you know, by just saying outlandish shit just to be in the headlines. I think it's very unbecoming of... Anyone yeah, to do that. But and I listen, see a lot of listen, people. Listen, you've that. gotten into trouble for doing that sometimes. But, but I don't do it on purpose. It's not you. purposeful it, yet. Yes, yes. But you be you. The best thing I can say about everyone who's successful that I've seen do it, whether it's Casey Newton over a platform or, or be who you are. That's right. that's what's got to get through. The genuine you. You can't be produced. Don't be produced. 
on. Is this, does this sound produced? produced? They're telling me now. No, we it doesn't. Go. No, no. <laughs> Karis Wisher. No, not at all. I love you. Thank you for joining. They're great. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank the you. Book, and listen to me next time. Listen I will. to me. Call me if another billionaire shows up. I'll tell you what's going to happen. Unless they want okay? to marry me. Thank you very much, oh, Karis. No, Fisher. you're getting married. No, no, don't say that to your lovely, gorgeous fiance. Do not. Uh, Don, old. congratulations we'll on your upcoming marriage. Thank okay? you very much. The book is called Thank Burn you. Book by the lovely Kara Swisher. Thanks for joining us, Kara. Thank you. And thank you for joining us, everyone. That's it. We'll see you next time Thank here you. on The Don Lemon Show. Thanks for watching The Don Lemon Show. Click on the image in the top right to subscribe to my channel and the thumbnail in the bottom right to watch more content from my show. I'll see you next time.